Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to look at the latest on the weather front that is moving eastwards across the UK at the moment. We'll also have a look at the mid to long range forecast where things are looking like it's going to be quite fine and dry potentially for the last third of August starting to come into the last 10 day uh, into the 10 day time frame of the models and it's looking like high pressure may be starting to take more of an influence. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well. Links in the description. Do make sure if you haven't already check out my video from earlier where I had a look at the latest on Tropical Storm Fred, which is progressing through the Caribbean and could be impacting Florida by Friday, Saturday, and it could at that time be a very strong tropical storm, if not a hurricane. And after that, there's the potential it could get caught up in the jet stream as ever with some of these storms, and that could start to influence the UK's weather in a few weeks' time. That could, of course, impact the fine and dry weather we're starting to see on the models at the moment. So we need to keep an eye on that. So if we do start by having a look at the latest radar, you can see the weather front that is moving eastwards. It is weakening quite significantly, as the models did predict. Hasn't really progressed much um, beyond Wales, northwest England, and parts of southwestern areas in terms of um, England and Wales. For Scotland, though, has progressed pretty much completely through and is raining quite heavily in eastern Scotland at the moment, but should be slowly petering away this evening. Now, it is a decaying weather front now, so as it progresses eastwards overnight tonight, could um, give a little bit of drizzle further eastwards, but just really just some cloud. There's still going to be some more unsettled weather in the north and west. It's not going to be high pressure instantly. Uh, still a few weather fronts and some showers moving in. Further southwards and eastwards, though, looking like we could be seeing another pleasant day again tomorrow. Um, similar to see, uh, similar to what we saw today, where it was quite uh, quite nice, especially where I was in London. Um, we've got nice blue skies, feeling about 23, 24, 25 degrees, t-shirts and shorts weather, um, really nice. Tomorrow it could be more cloud around, and maybe the odd shower or there, uh, here or there, but still looking pretty decent. So if we do run through the latest uh, for the GFS run, which I can say I've had a look, at, a look through already, and it is a bit of an outlier in terms of the um, models, but, and we'll see why that does happen towards the sort of 10 day time frame. So if we do run through this low pressure system, does move through towards Scotland. As it's close, it could give more widespread showers. That's why I say there's potential for a few showers in the south tomorrow. But of course, further northwards and westwards is always favoured for those heavier showers. Eventually, the low does fill in, and then we do see this small feature move through Sunday, um, which could give more widespread rain. And we need, really need to keep an eye on that as it is a developing feature, but then it does decay as it reaches the UK. Beyond that, high pressure does build in, and we get this sort of weird northwesterly wind. We actually get some quite warm air coming in that's come up all the way from the eastern side of the United States, been pushed up to Greenland, and is coming back down towards the UK. Could be quite moisture laden air, um, especially coming all the way across the Atlantic. So, with this, especially in Scotland um, and sort of on the mountains where this air gets forced upwards, we could see a lot of cloud and potentially some drizzle and even some quite heavy rain potentially there. But we really need to keep an eye on what happens with that because, again, that really does depend um, on exactly how much uh, moisture is in the air um, and the exact wind direction, of course. So we'll have to look at that in the short range module near the time. But it, at, at the moment, I don't, I don't think it's too much of a worry, but it could bring some warmer, warmer and humid air in, so feeling quite warm and pleasant there. And many areas are closer to high pressure, so of course there will be some showers around further northwards and eastwards, considering the lowest towards Scandinavia, but it just does look like it's going to be a little bit better. But as we are towards day 10, this is where the models start to disagree, especially with the GFS. The GFS builds off this little cut-off low, whereas the other models have high pressure building in, um, bringing things quite fun and dry for the last third of August, like we uh, we have been looking at. The GFS builds this cut-off low right towards the southwest, and although there's a lot of high pressure around for many areas of Europe, all the way to Iceland, Greenland, Scandinavia, the UK is sat under this little low pressure system, um, which will of course be spiraling up showers, um, longer spells of rain, and probably some thunderstorms as well, considering the air was going to be coming up from the near continent, potentially quite hot and humid. So very interesting there. It is in the long time frame, but it's quite a stark difference to what the other models are showing. Definitely the other models are not producing this low pressure system as much. Beyond that though, high pressure does eventually build in by 384 hours for the last few days of August, with big, this big high pressure building up, potentially turning things much warmer and drier. Just a few days later, 
than the ECMWF and GM. So if we do have a look at the ECMWF now, see that low moves through and that smaller low does move through and then we get that northwesterly wind of course with quite warm upper air temperatures coming in off the Atlantic. Quite uh, quite moisture laden air of course so could of course be some rain around but then as at day 10 we do build high pressure in. Now at this stage it's a bit of a flimsy ridge of high pressure but it's high pressure nonetheless. There are a few small lows around and we're not directly under the centre of a strong air of high pressure, it's just generally high pressure, so there still could be a few showers around, especially further eastwards, we're closer to the lows. Um, but it's stark contrast to the GFS, which obviously develops low pressure system in this little gap here, where we do see some lower heights, but nothing substantial enough to be giving quite a vigorous low we saw there on the GFS. So very interesting there, but the ECM is going much warmer um, and dry. You see the upper airs aren't spectacular, um, but it is still summer months, the sun is still strong, so whenever we do get dry days like we've had today, for example, in the south and the east, things can still feel very warm and pleasant, um, even if the upper airs are not remarkable. So if we do have a look at the GM run, which is probably by far the warmest and driest run, you can see the low pressure moving through. And then again, that other low that moves through on Sunday decays away, and then we get that northwesterly wind with some warm upper air temperatures. Again, could be some rain with that on the uh, coming off, on if the, in off the Atlantic, and then the high pressure builds in, and we see constant high pressure really all the way to day ten, where we have quite a big area of high pressure over the top of the UK, that spent uh, making things quite dry and fine, if not a little bit warm, if we start to get some warmer upper air temperatures starting to develop under this high pressure system. Now there is a potential for a small cutoff low developing. You can see there are slightly lower heights, um, symbolic by a little uh, more yellowy patch there, potentially for a little up, upper upper level trough, which could develop a few isolated showers or thunderstorms. But generally, we are under high pressure. The things are looking much finer and drier. If we do have a look through the GFS ensembles, if we do look first through the 12Z run, we'll have a look at 6Z as well because the 12Z quite, hasn't quite completely come out. Over the next few days in London, things are going to be quite dry. But then there's going to be that low pressure potentially moving back in, more showers around. But as we head into the longer term, upper air conditions go up, maybe a couple of degrees above average, and there is a dec decrease in precipitation signal, which can be a, see a big precipitation signal from the GFS operation run, has no support whatsoever, so that's probably from that cutoff low developing. Um, so very interesting to see that. If we do go back to the 6Z run, we can see in the longer term, there are still a few precipitation spikes, but generally they are pretty low, and the temperatures are really climbing up. There's one ensemble there, going up to 22, 23 degrees, 850 HPA, which would give temperatures into the mid-30s, feeling very, very hot indeed for end of August. So we have to keep an eye on that, but at this stage, it's looking encouraging for some hot and dry weather, potentially for the last third of August. It is still at least a week, maybe 10 days away, so it is still quite uncertain exactly how it will come about, and whether it does happen exactly as these models are showing it at this stage. We have seen very big flips before um, in terms of, um, the models having confidence in the longer term and then suddenly not having confidence. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it, but for now it is looking encouraging. We could be seeing some hot and dry weather for the last third of August. If we do have a look at the 2 meter temperatures towards the end of August, we can also see temperatures getting up to around 25, 26, maybe even higher. I also do want to briefly have a look at what the temperatures are going to be like further northwards. So if we do have a look at Glasgow, you can see in the longer term, we still do have some precipitation signals, especially from some um, of the ensemble members. Now, this isn't unusual for Scotland. Um, this far in the future, there is always going to be probably um, quite a few ensemble members having low pressure around. But you can see the temperatures are slightly above average. There isn't a massive deluge. There are quite a few precipitation signal, precipitation spikes, but not a massive amount. So we'll just have to keep an eye on how far north the high pressure does spread, whether we do get an influence of any toppling lows coming over the high pressure, which would, of course, impact Scotland the most. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. So it does look like definitely in the south, things are potentially looking warm and dry. Further northwards, still a bit unsure. If we finally go through the UK Met Office run, um, so we could see at the moment that weather fronts uh, progressing eastwards very quickly decaying away. A few showers around tonight 
And then by tomorrow, again, we could see a few showers in the south, potentially, and again, the north and western areas, parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland, through tomorrow afternoon. More persistent rain potentially moving in at times. And then by Friday, more showers outbreaking more wide, widely as low pressure takes more of an influence over the weather. But again, mainly in the north and the northwest. Beyond that, as we have through Saturday, Saturday looks like a decent day until we do see some more rain move in. But it does look like it's decaying. It's probably that filling in low pressure system we saw on the uh, models. Beyond that, though, things turning a bit drier. Uh, still some showers around, but generally... No massive, real, real massive deluge. Monday does look like there's going to be a lot of showers around, especially in the south, as we do have low pressure influence, but not looking like a massive deluge. And again, it is five days away, so things can change quite dramatically in terms of shower activity in that length of time. So if we do have a look at the um, temperature charts, if we do move through Thursday afternoon, you can see temperatures are getting up to around 23, maybe 24 degrees in the east uh, and the southeast, maybe a bit cooler further north and west, but it's only getting up to maybe 17, 18 degrees where you do see sunshine and under the cloud and rain at times, potentially a little cooler than that. As we head into Friday, we see by the afternoon, again, widely maybe t low 20s, 21, 22, so not cold, but not very hot or warm. Um, if we do see sunshine, it's um, where, you, where you do see sunshine, the temperatures will feel pleasant. Of course, it is summer still, and 22 degrees is decent, um, really. And I know a lot of people do enjoy sort of these low 20s temperatures. As we head into Saturday, uh, you can see by the afternoon, temperatures again, widely 21, 22, maybe 23 in the far south and southeast. Temperatures widely, again, mid to high teens, where areas have got more persistent rain. You can see them quite well across Ireland, parts of Wales and Scotland, of course. Uh, with some showers around, it does look like temperatures will be held back a little bit, only mid-teens. As we head through Sunday afternoon, temperatures again climbing to maybe 24, 25 degrees in the southeast. As those temperatures at the surface start to build, again, widely uh, low 20s, maybe high teens. And then by Monday afternoon... Things, again, looking decent for many areas in England, 23, 24 degrees potentially, but widely around 20, 21. So, not a massive deluge really coming up. Um, it does look like there will be, of course, some showers around for many, especially further northwards. For the south could see some showers, of course, but it does look encouraging. High pressure is going to be building in for that last third of August for many areas. The north, still unsure, of course, having a look at that Glasgow Ensemble um, chart. But at this stage, uh, I wouldn't take those too literally in terms of precipitation um, as they probably are showing um, low pressure systems coming close um, to the UK. If we do get more firm high pressure building in, I'm sure they will repel those away. So we'll just have to keep an eye on what happens um, towards the last third of August, but hoping for some warm and dry weather. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.